Welcome to Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul. Today is Monday, July 6th, 2020. It is the Monday after the 4th of July holiday weekend. And uh, it's the first show since uh, we had our Facebook Live on Friday night. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm just going to get get right into it, to our first bullet, our first hot take tonight, because it was all I could do not to tell Brees during the pre-show or not to text him uh, about three hours ago. All right, so play golf today, Brees. All right. Same course. Ugh. 92. What? Shot a 92. I shot a 44 on the back. 48. I went 48, 44. I had no sevens, no eights. The worst, the worst hole I had was, okay, you remember the third hole, the uphill par three? Sure. Tripled it. I tripled it. That was my worst hole. Where we almost hit the gentleman that told us Exa to play through. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I birdied 18 for a 92. Congratulations. Yeah, man. It was, it was big. It was huge. And now, first, I, listen. I got to find out, did you play by yourself? No, I did not. Okay. So there's a. Yeah. So that was big. That was big because, uh, I mean, I don't want to say there was any pressure. It was just, we played at a nice pace. Um, it was me and Terry, uh, a friend of mine named uh, Scott Schomer, um, and uh, our former golf coach, um, Scott Shelton, uh, who's a psychology teacher and uh, or Sean Shelton. Sean Shelton's a um, psychology teacher, and Scott teaches science. Um, and of course, Terry's my guy. He's a marketing teacher in the same department as me. So, um, Sean, Sean, he shot an eighty-three. Um, he went. He shot. He went forty-three, forty, and uh, then I went forty-eight, forty-four. Um, so. Uh, yeah, man. So you finished sec second out of the group. Second out of the group, I did. Uh, out of the group. It was big. All that, all that does, Adam, is want you to get up early tomorrow and play again. Just play again. And guess yeah. what? You're going to. I'm playing Thursday at 10 o'clock <laughs> now. Thir now, this is going to be interesting because uh, I'm playing with our athletic director and another buddy of mine, Matt Jones, and some an unknown fourth party. I don't know who it's going to be. Um, but – we are playing, I don't know if you remember or not, driving to my house, okay? When you got when you got on the highway, uh, Highway 41, you're coming south, and then you took a right at that Publix. Yes. Okay, the gated community there. Yes, Governor's something. Governor's Club, that's where I'm playing. Yeah. I mean, I drive three and a half hours. You can't hook your boy up. Dude. Except I, when I'm at home. I know, I know. I know. And apparently, Governors has some sort of thing where you, like, every now and then they do, like, these, like, member for a day times. Right. If, if you're in the public, you can pay, you know, it's like, it's going to end up costing me, like, 55 bucks to play there. But it's really nice. Um, and uh, so, apparently they do this every now and then. So, my buddy Matt Jones, he found the deal. Um, I was able to, to get us on. So, we'll see what happens. Um, I was really good, man. I was, I was really good off the tee today. Uh, I, I think here's the, here's the key. And, and you know, playing that course, this is hard. Um, I, I had zero penalty strokes today. Zero. Wow. No balls in the water. I lost no balls. Very good. That was, that was the key. That was the key to the whole round. Yeah. Even if I didn't hit it well, I could still, you know, there was a second shot and not a drop to be had, you know what I mean? So, um, and I will be on it. The weather was a factor. It rained very hard during the, while we were playing the fifth hole. And, uh, I honestly, I honestly thought that, <laughs> that it was going to be, Oh man, we're going to be battling rain like this the rest of the day. <laughs> but it was just really during that, during that hole, it came down pretty good. Um, and, did not get super hot after that, so it was actually pretty, uh, pretty good time. So um, 
it was uh, just I just hit a lot of good shots. Um, my short game was pretty good. My honestly, like if I could have putted the ball, if I would have read the greens any better, I mean I could have broken ninety. There were several putts I should have hit, like inside of eight feet that I should have hit, and I didn't. I ended up two putting them. And a couple approaches I wish I had back, but you know, we all, you know, if it's if uh, ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Yeah. And so, yeah, there were probably there may be four or five shots I wish I had back. Um, the that seventh hole, I don't know if you remember the seventh hole, um, which is just straight. Um, it's got the wall behind it, you know, where you come out of the the tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forget where you hit on that one. Oh, that's the one that <laughs> you hit up on the hill and had to go get it, okay? Um, I hit it probably – I was within probably 90 yards off the off the tee. I just killed it. Um, I was up on the hill, so it was above my feet, um, and I just didn't – I just hooked it because it was above my – I didn't play it enough to the, to the right, um, and I hooked it. That was – I take that back. That was my – only penalty stroke of the day I hit it in that little creek to the left and to be honest I didn't duck hook it into the creek it was tailing it hit the green and rolled off the back side of the green into the creek so it wasn't a horrible shot but I mean it ended up where it ended up so um but yeah so where did you play yesterday Harpeth Hills okay yeah uh buddy invited me and I, I was the surprise fourth guy, as you, <laughs> as you would like to call it. Uh, we ended up playing a match play, a best ball, uh, little little uh, best ball match play. So we ended so like all, a, all square. Like a scramble? Okay. Oh, you all square. Okay. So a little oh, yeah. action. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I played a little bit better. A little bit Did better you? than – yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, I, anyway. I don't, I don't think anyone, either one of us could have – Played, played any worse than we did that day i mean to i mean you know how we started off you know eight and seven um i mean i started off um bogey bogey so i was five, yeah. five. So that right there that's five shots you know Not right two holds you know that that i didn't give up so uh and again i missed a putt on on the first hole that i probably should have hit for par you know just a little yeah. stuff like that so but i was right there um and uh you know, it, we had a good time. It was fun. And we'll see what happens on Thursday. All right. So the second hot take is over the weekend. Um, bit, you know, you went to fireworks on Friday night, which I'm assuming that was a big success, right? Sure. Absolutely. And since you're here, nobody got hurt. No one got hurt. <laughs> no one got hurt. All, all, all good. Okay. Um, did y'all go somewhere – Saturday night, actually on the fourth, and watch some fireworks. Shot our own. Got your own. Okay. All right. Got our own. Now, did where do you go to get your own? Dixon. Uh no, 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 no. You know, I talked about how I ran a fireworks stand about three years ago. Right. Uh, I go to that guy. Okay. Who, who still continues to run it? Okay. Where is he, it? Is it in Nonesville? It's in Franklin. Franklin, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Gives me the employee discount. Atta baby. Yes, nice. Nice. Well, so. we we went over to uh, my uh, brother and sister-in-law. They live in Woodstock. They just moved over there uh, right at the start of the pandemic. And um, they were having a public event, I guess, um, in the Lowe's parking lot. And we could see it perfectly from where we were. In fact, I put it on our uh, on our Twitter, the finale. I put it on our Twitter at D Through Sports. You guys can check that out um, and uh, follow us on that. But um, it was really good. And the fact that you had people all across, you know, I could look out and just see all across the, you know, the horizon, different people shooting them off. It was pretty cool. And of course, I love uh, I love Fourth of July, but. Another thing that signifies 4th of July for me is the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Now, I don't know where you stand on this, but I find it to be must-see TV. 
I can't not watch that. I watch it every year and I'm amazed. I'm amazed and disgusted by it at the same time. <laughs> so, and it just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. It just, it gets my attention and it holds it for 10 minutes solid. Um, and, uh, again, Joey Chestnut is the absolute man. He ate 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Breeze. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm also, uh, a, uh, avid yearly watcher of the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Uh, I, I think I was, um, I'm, I, you know, my kids come in and like, Dad, what are you doing? I was like, stop talking. I'm in the middle of something. Um, you know, Joey Chestnut, I mean, comparatively speaking, 13 title, thirteen world titles, right? Um, right. And if you compare that to uh, other guys who hold a championship or title, uh, you know, Bill Russell, 11 NBA titles. Rafael Nadal, 12 French Opens. I mean, this guy. He's at the top. Yeah, and he's not going to be beat for a while. No, no. Um, now, you know, we talk about the COVID asterisks on certain events, <laughs> and I think maybe this one could have an asterisk beside it. Uh, Joey Chestnut broke the record, obviously, got to eat inside in the A.C., uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, he did not really have any challenger at all. It, it, you know, they just brought in uh, uh, four guys off the streets of, you know, <laughs> and yeah. said, Hey, you want to eat some free hot dogs? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was not quite the same, you know, Atmos the atmosphere was, that's one thing about that. that oh yeah. The atmosphere, the guy with the, with the, the hat, sure. there, yeah. you know, he's there every year. But, man, he hypes it up, and the people are going crazy, and there's, you know, everybody's dressed like, you know, Uncle Sam, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just a crazy atmosphere. Um, so that was, that was missing uh, for me, anyway. Well, you wow. know, and, and the big thing is the introductions of each of oh, the contestants yeah. is a big deal. As you oh, talked yeah. about that, gentlemen. Um, you know, and I talked about the field, and it's not, you know, not being very – competitive you know it was like plus 2100 for joey chestnut to win which is or you know just ridiculous you'd have to bet 2100 dollars <laughs> to win a hundred dollars um and but the the greatest thing that came out of the whole nathan's hot dog eating contest is the women's division and it's uh Mont montville school superintendent renee rotvert uh, Rothtar, Renee Rothtar. Okay. Yeah. She's a school superintendent from, um, let's see, uh, New Jersey. Okay. She only ate seven, seven hot dogs. <laughs> you know, the winning, <laughs> she's 61 years old. Oh my gosh. Didn't the first win like 45? And that's also like Chestnut's girlfriend or something. Oh, the one that won it? Yeah, that must yeah. cost it must cost them a fortune to go on a date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and just to see this lady just, you know, just eat a hot dog and just kind of you know <laughs> wave to the crowd or whatever. It this was actually her second time to do it, I believe. Um I mean, I thought you had, had to in order to qualify for that, I thought you had did. to win win something. She she did. She qualified in some region tournament. Oh my god. Uh she ate eight hot dogs and whatever <laughs> and qualified. Just uh it's just <laughs> it's just funny to just see, you know, again who they you know, who they get and, and how they how it comes out. But yeah, I mean it is a fourth of July for me as well, uh, a must see and it's definitely marked in at you know noon. Uh, oh yeah. My time. So Oh yeah. There you go. Joey Chestnut does it again. The guy, 75 hot dogs. I think someone said that's like 21,000 calories. And uh, so congratulations, Joey. I'm sure he's going to be on a break. Yeah. No for a while. 
Yeah. And, I, and again, you know, back in the day, you know, I mean, this has been going on forever. And back when I was working fireworks stand, I wouldn't get to see any of this stuff. So um, it's kind of nice to not be working on the fourth um, and be able to do some things, uh, watch some fireworks with the family and um, just hang out with them. So that was a lot of fun. All right. Now get to the big news of the day, which I didn't even know about because mainly because I was on the golf course all day and you texted me and I didn't get it until uh, the end. Um, Patrick Mahomes signs a 10 year, $450 million contract to be basically a chief for the next decade. Um, with him and Andy Reid working together, how many Super Bowls are they going to win? Um, I would say at least two for sure. That that would be that was my number as well. I kicked around three possibly, um, but there's always that chance that that huge contract when you're paying your quarterback forty five million, you can't afford to pay anybody else or get anybody else that's any good. These guys like you know Kelsey, you know you're going to have to pay him if you want to keep him. Um, you know uh, Miko Hardeman. You know, in a couple of years, he's going to get paid. You know, so uh, you kind of have to look at it like this. But uh, but they had to lock him down. They had to lock him down, and they did. And it absolutely dwarfs anybody else's contract. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's like th- <laughs> it's like three times what anybody any other quarterback's contract is worth. Right. So here's, and so here's the thing: like, <laughs> if you're Dak Prescott, you got to be really ticked off. <laughs> because it, you know that Dallas is not paying him anywhere near this for any of that we're near that long a period of time. I'm thinking if he gets anything, he'll get a a four a four year deal worth maybe 110 million or something like that. But it is clear, Patrick Mahomes, this is the NFL is his world and everybody else is just living in it. And he is taking the game over. <laughs> watching him play. He's dynamic. He makes plays every which way. Um, and the game is never over with the ball in his hands. And, you know, they locked him down. Him and Andy Reid are married for the next 10 years. Well, if Andy Reid makes it that far. Um, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the coaching ex- life expectancy is not, <laughs> not great yeah. in the NFL. Uh, but – you know, a couple of, couple of things I want to point out is, you know, the Mahomes deal, $140 million of it is a, the injury guarantee. So, no, if he doesn't play another game in his NFL career, he's getting $140 million. Thanks that's a lot. A, that's more. That's, that's correct. Talk about the Falcons. That's more than Matt Ryan's contract. And that's why Matt Ryan is trending on Twitter big time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because he, um, he is – everybody is like – everybody here in Atlanta wants to call him a – uh, Hall yeah. and quarterback. Yeah. Um, second Why? thing. I, yeah, really. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, second thing I want to mention is this. You know, so many teams in the NFL draft are always looking for that perfect quarterback fit, that franchise quarterback. And for someone like Kansas City who just won the Super Bowl to now locked it in, they can spend all their drafts for the next 10 years focusing on all the needs that they have Uh and they do not have to worry about the quarterback position except for the guy maybe to hold the clipboard. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. It is, it is truly beneficial to an NFL team to lock down that quarterback because draft picks, you don't waste them on running backs. No. And you know, they can focus on, so many things now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, with that, with that, that it's a great point that you're making. Now you focus on line of scrimmage, O line, D line. And that's all you do because you can always pick up skill guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> who, who they have all the right, time. Who yeah. they have right now are ridiculous. Yeah. They, yeah. they Adam, I got to tell you this. I, I turned the TV on Sunday. And CBS was showing the replay of the uh, Chiefs-Titans AFC Championship game. Oh, yeah. Titans are up 17-7 uh, 
17, 17, yeah, 17, then 17, 14. And then Mahomes breaks like four tackles and scores and right before halftime. And there's so many weapons. I mean, now they return 20 out of 22 starters. I mean, it's just like, what in the world? Yeah, I, I, it's 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 video game stuff. I mean, I don't know how you're, I don't know how you're gonna how you're gonna stop them. Um, and and the scary part about it is their defense has gotten a lot better. Um, and so, you know, you talk, you know, as as excited as Raider fans were for the move to Vegas, now they just got to be like, oh, geez, yeah, that's a, yeah. That's, oh, that's dude, that's a, you're zero and two right now. Yeah, everybody in the AFC West, zero <laughs> and two. For I mean, sure. I mean, they're all. I mean, think about. It. I mean, I mean, Denver, Drew Locke, no. Okay, Drew, David Carr and the Raiders, mm, no. I mean, right. the poor Chargers. Chargers. I mean, that's the only. That's a just a four team division, correct? Correct. I mean, so. Right. I mean, so at this point, they're tons better than anybody in their division. That's six wins right there every year for the next three years, four years, yeah. five yeah. years, you know? For sure. Um, for sure. And so, you know, you think about their crossover games. I mean, they're going to win. They're double-digit wins for the next decade, I think. I think so. They just guaranteed that by signing this contract. Signing him to this this deal, they just guaranteed double digit wins for the next decade, and probably playoff appearances in every season he plays. Yeah, every single one. All right, enough All right. of that. Yeah, <laughs> enough of that. Yeah, yeah. When I told when I told Leslie that, um, I said, "Do you know who Patrick Mahomes is?" I said, she said, "No." I said, "Well, he's the guy for he's the quarterback for the Chiefs who just won the Super Bowl." She goes, "Oh," I said, "He just signed a 10, 10 year forty four hundred fifty million dollar contract." She goes, I don't want to hear anything about those football players not getting <laughs> to play and all this stuff. She, I, 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 I hit a nerve there. But anyway, um, <laughs> switching sports here, we've gone from. Adam, you've got to be fired up, man. Listen, uh, you're, 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 we, you're, are, <laughs> we are 17 days away. You've got to be fired up. From the Dodgers and Giants opening it up on Sunday night base. I think it's going to be the 24th. Uh, I just 20, happened to run 23rd. across this. I just happened to run across this story uh, on Twitter. The Yankees were doing an inter squad game. No umpire. I think they took their bullpen catcher and dressed him up as an umpire <laughs> in catching gear <laughs> and threw him behind there. I don't know if it, you can see some of the videos that they've been showing. I actually, yeah, I actually watched some. Of it. We were after we played golf. We were up at a, a little restaurant up the road, uh, and <laughs> one of the guys I was eating with he's like is that the, yeah is that are they throwing bp and it was the yankees inner squad game there absolutely on tv and dude I, I was like hey you were zoned in locked in i was i was in the zone then uh, but uh yeah i mean it gave you it gave you a little bit of a sense of what it's going to be like when they resume um I, and i'm trying to think um i'm trying to think of what team is going to have the cardboard cutouts of fans there's there's a team that's gonna have cardboard. I want to say it's the Oakland A's. Really, it's gonna have card. Get this though. This is even better. They're gonna take it one step further. Not only are they gonna have cardboard cutouts of fans, but if your cutout gets hit by a foul ball, they're gonna mail it to you. <laughs> no way. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. So. Um, oh, you're exactly right. What? The A's uh, are, are one. Now, listen, you've got to purchase your cardboard cutout of themselves. Yes, yes. And they'll be placed in the seats in the stadium. And, yeah, exact. Yep. oh, my goodness. That is that is a great promotion. Oh, it's a great promotion. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It, it, it um, reminds me of a good minor league promotion. Yeah. <laughs> Anything, any the uh, cash drop and the helicopter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, anything, anything uh, like that. When we we attended so many, you know, uh, so many of those at uh, Greer Stadium, you know, the 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 windbreaker night or yeah. or frisbee night or 
batting helmet night, cap night, all that sort of stuff. But, um, that was uh, that's the inner squad, and that was that was the first American baseball that we really have seen. So, seventeen days away from it getting real, and you better not you better not start off slow with this sixty game schedule. Um, you better yeah. You better you can't. Off. What are you saying? You can't go zero and three to open the season. No, no, you can't drop the opening series or go <laughs> or go two and six on your first road trip. You just you're just not gonna be able to do that. Um, you got to come out. You got to bring it every night, and every game's gonna mean more um, uh, every every night. So anyway, that kind of gets us to our uh, as we're winding the show down. Uh, some unfortunate news, which you shared with me today. Uh, Charlie Daniels passed away, um, and uh, country music legend um, played with some of the greats. Chris Christopherson, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Cash, uh, David Allen Coe, you know, all these guys yeah. that, that he, he uh, played with um, and influenced many, many more uh, country artists. Did, have, did you ever see him in concert? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, one of his big things in, in Nashville was the Volunteer Jam. Yep. And the first one was held back. I, I did a little – Research for the show, Adam. Hopefully, you're proud of it. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> 74, 1974. Oh, wow. Uh, held at War Memorial Auditorium. <laughs> and obviously, we could go back and talk about all the concerts we saw at War Memorial Auditorium. Oh, Striper, my never forget. Striper. Yep. Um, oh, my goodness. <clears throat> the next one was going to be held at, at the Murphy Center in Murfreesboro. But, and then it eventually got went to its, I would say, its home turf for a while. At Municipal Auditorium, yeah, in Nashville, yeah. and then it eventually went out to Starwood. It did, uh, yeah. I think yeah. that's where I saw that's where him. I saw was, him. Yeah. yeah, that's where I saw him was at Starwood, um, and I, it may have been at the Volunteer Jam because yeah. that it was kind of just like this. You know, a lot of different bands would come, and um, a good time was had by all. Uh, at the Volunteer uh, yeah, Jam. it wasn't it over several days as well. Um. You know, it may may have been. I, uh, I mean, it wasn't like a Bonnaroo thing, but it was right, like, right, right. Two, yeah, yeah. And, and eventually, they were going to have uh, this scheduled for September fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty, Volunteer Jam uh, twenty one. So, um, I don't know how that's going to end up being played out. But you know, you talked about some of the people that you know he had, like even like Ted Nugent, uh, oh, yeah. Allman Brothers, Marshall Tucker. Oh Stevie yeah, Ray Vaughan. I mean, it's that's Southern rock at its finest, and and oh, we kind of grew up in the middle of it here. But um, you know, very it's very fortunate. unfortunate. But yeah, eighty three years old, and uh, you know, <clears throat> it, it, it kind of an inside joke. You know, um, a big thing in the in, in our middle school is uh, is orchestra, and <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Whenever it's a teacher's birthday, the orchestra teacher will take uh, her class and they will string happy birthday and, um, you know, they will play it for the teacher. You know, and these guys are just beginning, obviously. Yeah. But when it comes to January 24th and it's my time and they come in there, I go, don't you dare play happy birthday. You better be playing Devil Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> And they look at me like, what? What is that? <laughs> and I look at the teacher and I said, you better educate these students on true, proper violin playing. Yeah. <laughs> Have they ever done it? Uh, heavens no. Okay. I didn't think so. All right. I, I, you know, I think she did tell me at one time there may, have, there may be one young lady uh, that was skilled enough and kind of knew – you know, uh, so that they, she could play it. Now, probably not at the Charlie Daniels way where, like, right. it seems like there's a string breaking every, uh, <laughs> you know, two seconds. I mean, have you ever seen that guy's uh, – what do they call the bow? Yeah, the bow. After he plays oh, yeah. that song, it's oh, just yeah. like – It's worn out, dude. Yeah. It's worn so, out. Great, great song, great song. Yeah. Um, all right, so we we left you – when we when – we, Spoke last, Brees. You had you were heading out the door quickly to see some fireworks. 
But then when you came back, uh, there was the, the, the Disney Plus invasion, the Hamilton invasion in your house. So <laughs> we're trying to figure out, and as I was walking upstairs tonight, my crew was down there watching High School Musical. I don't know which one it was. It was one or two, or I'm pretty sure it wasn't three, but it was one of the first two. So I thought about this. I was like, so what's a bigger deal? What is, is a Hamilton a bigger deal than High School Musical was back in the day? Or has, has it supplanted because it's a big time like Broadway thing? Well, if you ask me, it, it's, it's a no brainer. If you, if you say, hey, pick one or the other to go watch, it's a no brainer. High School Musical all day, buddy. Oh. I mean, I'm, to have a I'm guy. I'm right there with you. I mean, Troy, give me a break. This guy is unreal. Captain of the basketball team. Guy's the lead in the play. He's picking up girls left and right. He's I mean, a trifecta, dude. I mean, this I guy's mean, got it going on. Yeah, yeah. But when absolutely. I walked in my house on Friday night after the fireworks show <laughs> to about 10 people, uh, half of which I didn't know, so, uh, I guess they just they, – they, they saw that – uh, they knew from my son that we had Disney Plus, and so it was obviously a, a, a free show. Uh, Hamilton seems like it's a pretty big deal. I did find out from my good friend Tim Reed, who ended up watching it Friday night, that it's not really it, – it's a big deal to the purest of the Broadway shows. It's a bigger deal to people like Tim – because he doesn't have to pay a $500 ticket to go see it and sleep through it. Yeah. Right. So um, I'm sure if you gave him the option, I'm sure he's a high school musical guy as well. Yeah. You got two daughters and. Oh yeah. I, we I mean, grew up, we grew up on that stuff. Our yeah. Hey, hey that. you got to give a shout out to Troy. I mean, that guy could play some golf as well. Right. He's, I mean, he, he's a golfer. I mean, he's, he's all around athlete. He can act, he can sing, he can dance. I mean, huge again, total. So maybe this Alexander Hamilton guy, he was the same way. Don't know, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that I'm willing to wager two hours and 40 minutes of my life to find out. Yeah. And here's another thing too. Okay. This shows you how little I have to nothing I know about Broadway. All right. I watched the first 10 minutes of it. Okay. Because I figured if this is like the next coolest thing, I need to at least have said, you know, hey, I attempted it, right? Or I, I know what you're talking about. I I don't get it. I don't get it. It's not, it's not like it's 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 a musical, so it's not a play. I, I didn't realize there was a difference. Okay. A musical, they literally sing every line. I didn't okay, I'm an idiot. I didn't realize that. Okay. Plays are different. You can have a play and then have a musical number in the play, okay? Right. But the musical is straight up music the whole time. Everything, every spoken word is, it's not spoken, it's sung in a song. So um, apparently the consensus with everybody that I've spoken to is if you really want to watch it, you need to watch it on a closed caption so you can read it. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. If I'm watching TV, I'm watching TV. So I don't have to read anything except the score. Okay. I'm not reading lines. I'm not reading any of that stuff. I'm not working. I'm watching TV. Well, let me ask you this on Netflix. There's been a couple of shows based out of uh, Spain. Or yes. Mes uh, like Narcos. And uh, what is the other one that just came out? That was a heist a money heist. heist money heist. Hey, I obviously we have to read. <laughs> no, we don't. Remember they it's subtitle. It's it they subtitle, but you still got to read it, but, right? No, it's in English. Okay, it's in English. No, you don't have to read. It's just off a little bit. I got you. But money heist, you and I can both agree. It's it's like uh, enough, was good enough where I would ignore that. <laughs> it's like. Uh, the Godzilla movies. Yes, except not nearly that bad. Okay, okay. Well, so our final human know. interest vote is I'm the high school musical guy. I mean, we know and, you know where I stand. Yeah, and obviously you do too. But uh, yeah. listen, well, you got uh, big news for tomorrow, right? 
for our show tomorrow? Yes, I do have big news tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a special guest tomorrow night. Um, Paul and I will be welcoming Toledo Rockets quarterback and former Harrison High School state champion quarterback Gavin Hall onto the show. Uh, he will be coming to us. We'll be interviewing him tomorrow night at 9 p.m. He is in Toledo right now. He reported back to school yesterday. So I've been texting back and forth with him. So uh, we can't wait to get Gavin on here uh, and talk some Toledo Rockets football and uh, talk about some Harrison Hoya memories um, and uh, just, a, just a, a dream season that the Hoyas had. They were the USA Today team of the year. Uh, going 15-0 and 0 and winning the state championship. So we look forward to having Gavin on the show tomorrow night. Um, hope you guys tune in. Uh, check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, and Spotify, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check us out on Twitter at D3 Sports and follow us on Twitter. Anything for the fans, Brees? Hi. It's we're getting close to, to major sports to start happening. Uh, you know, hopefully the guys that are opting out will not influence uh, any of the big uh, outcomes. But uh, hey, just gonna have to play the games and find out, right? And we'll find out as the days keep moving, pressing forward. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see. And, and again, as we said, you can't don't you better jump out of the gate, okay? Uh, playing your best, playing your best ball. Don't don't wait till the last twenty games to try and make up five or six game lead so or deficit. So um, that's going to be interesting. I can't wait. Seventeen days away till opening day, um, and we got Gavin Hall here on our show tomorrow night for Paul Brees in Brentwood, Tennessee. Adam Freeman in Atlanta, Georgia. You've been listening to Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul.